So um, for me, this is a really exciting part of the project for randomization. And so what I'm going to do is spend the next um, 15, 20 minutes going through the process of how we're going to randomize these 20 facilities that the Achilles have mentioned, 10 to the intervention arm and 10 to the routine care arm. So before I do that, I'm just going to have a quick recap of what those two arms are. Um, Aditya went through this earlier on this morning, but let me just do a very quick recap. So for the routine care arm, there are three components. On-site sputum smear, microscopy, and into the health facilities. Referral sputum for expert at the hub. And then finally, regular supervision. So that's our routine care. Sometimes we're referring to it as standard of care. The intervention arm also has three components. And as we've just been discussing earlier on this morning, there's going to be an on-site expert machine doing on-site expert testing at the health facilities. And then there's also, in addition, clinic process redesign to really help collect and test sputum before the patient leaves the health facility. And then finally, regular feedback of quality indicators, quality metrics to the health facility staff. So those are the two um, arms. This is the intervention arm and then the standard of care or routine or routine um, care. So I guess the first question we want, that we, you might ask is, well, what is randomization in the context of this trial? And also, why are we doing it? So just to start off with what we mean by randomization, it's a method of assigning each of those 20 health facilities to either receive the intervention or the routine care by chance. And chance is the really important thing. It's like tossing a coin. We're going to do this purely by chance, okay? No other interference, no other choosing which arm you might want to be in, but just purely by chance. So each facility will then have an equal chance of either being in the intervention arm or in the routine care arm. And that's really crucial for the randomization. And why are we doing this? Well, really, the main reason why we're doing this is it minimizes bias. It will really help us understand the results of the study in about 18 months' time, but maybe a bit longer. It basically ensures that the intervention and routine care arms are as similar as possible at the start of the study with respect to important factors that might be associated with our study outcome. So that's a very quick summary of what randomization is and why we're doing it for this study. So there are various ways we might want to randomize. I'm going to start off describing the simple approach, okay, and then I'll explain why that might be problematic in this study. So the simple approach is that we have these 20 facilities and we're just going to randomly assign 10 of them to be in the intervention arm and 10 to be in the routine care arm. And we actually can list all possible ways of doing that. Okay, there's a, there's a mathematical formula which allows you to uh, calculate the total number of possible ways of doing that. And I've listed that on the, on the slide here. So there's 184,757 possible ways of doing that. Okay, so that seems a large number of ways, that seems great. However, the problem with doing this in the context of randomizing a small a, a number of clusters, can we? So the potential problem with doing this simple randomization is that we're only randomizing a small number of clusters. Aditha explained the clusters with the facilities. We've only got 20 facilities that we're randomizing. It's still a very large study. But with only 20 facilities randomized to either receive the intervention or the routine care, what we're at great risk of is that there might be um, that the intervention and the routine care arms might not be similar at the baseline, at the start of the study. And that's a huge problem. And it's actually a very common problem with cluster randomized trials where we're randomizing a small number of units, a small number of facilities. 
So this simple randomization is fantastic if you have a large number of units, a large number of facilities, but with only 20, we're going to actually take a more complex approach. So the more complex approach to randomization is approach which actually we commonly use in cluster randomized trials. So it's uh, nothing that's um, unusual, it's an approach that I've used many times when we've conducted a cluster randomized trial. And what this complex approach is attempting to do is to ensure that the study groups, the intervention and the two care arms, are similar with respect to really important baseline data provided by each of, you, uh, each of the facilities. So it's really the real goal is to try and make sure they're as similar as possible. And there are two components to this more complex randomization. The first component is called stratification. So what we're going to do is divide the facilities into two groups. And then with each of those two groups, we're going to then randomize those facilities to receive the, either the intervention or routine care. So that's the first component of this more complex randomization, it's called stratification. And then the second um, approach, which we're going to actually add on, is called restriction. And restriction is actually a very common approach in cluster randomized trial, trials. And what we're doing by restriction is that we're going to eliminate certain randomizations that have, um, just by chance, um, given an imbalance um, or um, with respect to the intervention of control arm. So we're going to eliminate randomizations that have unbalanced arms. So these two approaches really help achieve our goal of making the intervention arm and the routine care arm as similar as possible at the start of the study. And that's really, really crucial for this kind of study. So as you might have heard or get guessed, in order to do this, we're going to have to use data collected <coughs> around the clinics. So uh, as, you, as you all been participating in, there's been a huge amount of baseline data collected from 2017 that has been well used for the randomization. And again, I think that this, is a, this data collection has been crucial for the randomization. We wouldn't have been able to do this randomization in such a way without such data. So the baseline, the baseline data that we've collected um, are data from the um, NTLP presumptive TB registers, the TB laboratory registers, the expert requisition forms, and the TB treatment um, re registers. And those data include um, information on basic patient demographics, HIV status, uh, the TB test results and the dates of those results, which are really important, as well as treatment status and dates of, of, of TB treatment. So there's been a, a huge amount of data collected and have been analysed to help us with the randomisation. So I'm going to quickly summarise the randomisation and then I'm going to show you an example of um, one example of our randomisation. So here is the summary. So we've uh, generated a computer program, and what that program does is first of all perform the stratification. So we're stratifying the, the, um, uh, the facilities into two groups, and the two groups are stratified based on the proportion of patients undergoing TB testing and, diagnosed, and who are diagnosed with TB and started on TB treatment within 14 days. So that's one of the key um, data points that were collected as part of their baseline data collection. So that percentage, um, we, have a, we have that percentage for each of the 20 clinics. And what we've done is just ordered the clinics in terms of increasing size of that percentage. And those with a percentage less than 6.2%, there are 10 clinics, are in the first group, and then those clinics who have a percentage greater than 6.2% are in the second group. So that's what we mean by stratification. The first group has 10 facilities, all with a percentage, this proportion, less than 6.2%, and the other group have 10 facilities with this proportion greater than equal to 6.2%. And then we do a randomization of each of those 10 facilities 
So the 10 facilities in the first group, five are randomised to the intervention, five are randomised to the standard of care duty. <coughs> so that's the first component. And because we've done stratification, the number of possible ways of doing that is reduced, but there's still a very large number of ways. There's around 60, well, there's exactly 63,504 ways of doing that. We can list those in our computer program. So on top of that, we're going to do our restriction. So as I said before, what restriction is doing is it's eliminating some of those randomizations where in, for which the facilities in the two groups are imbalanced, are, are not similar. And the data that we've used for restriction are, are the part of the data that's been collected for 2017. And I've listed all of the restriction variables in this, in this slide. So we are going to be restricting, so eliminating randomizations where there's not a balance. First of all, for the percentage of TB, uh, starting TB treatment within 14 days, we've stratified on that, but we're going to also restrict on that because we think that's a very important uh, a variable to stratify on. We're also going to restrict on urban and rural status, HIV prevalence of um, clinic attendees being uh, investigated for TB, the number of facilities per district, year enrolled in the project, that's either 2017 or the more recent facilities were enrolled in 2018. The frequency of sputum transport to the expert hub, that does differ across the facilities. The distance to the, uh, the expert hub. And finally, the number of patients being evaluated for TB. So all of these data have been used for our restriction. So when we apply the restriction criteria, we're now left with 11,392 randomizations. So it's still a very large number of randomizations that we've used. So for convenience, what we've done is we've just randomly selected 10,000 of those randomizations. And um, it's, that list is then then exported into Excel and I'm going to show you in the next few slides what that list looks like, and there's some printed copies as well. <coughs> in order to understand what this list looks like, you might have noticed that the facilities, the 20 facilities have all given, been given a facility ID. So uh, attached to your agenda, you should have a list of the facilities and the uh, ID number 1 through 20. So I would make a note of your ID for your particular facility. This is pretty crucial. It's just a very quick way of looking at our facilities. So has, everyone, has everyone's facility listed? <coughs> I hope so. <laughs> and if you're, you've identified your facility ID. <coughs> okay. So now let's look at what that Excel spreadsheet I've just given you a snapshot of what that Excel spreadsheet looks like. And what I've listed here is the first seven randomizations. Can I just quickly move this? So I've listed the first seven randomizations. They work from the first row down to number here, and I've also listed the last randomization. You'll see that we've labeled those possible randomizations starting from 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0001, all the way up to 9999. And that makes a total of 10,000 possible randomizations. Okay, so the randomization number is in the first column of the Excel spreadsheet. And that's quite, a, and that's a really crucial number that you'll see in the next few slides. Sorry, I hope you can see, okay. What you'll also see is 20 columns labeled 1 through 20, and they represent those 20 facilities. So facility number 1 is in this, is, is in this column here. Oops. Facility number 2 is in this column. So that's where the facility ID is important. So what you'll also see in this um, Excel, for example, the Excel spreadsheet, is each row represents a separate randomization. So let's just look at the first row, it's labeled 0000, 
And then you see these um, letters, A and B. In that first row, there are 10 facilities which got an A, and there are 10 facilities which got a B. And you can see we've labeled them group A and group E at the top of the, of the hall. Okay. So in each of these rows, there are exactly 10 facilities which have got an A attached to it, and there are 10 facilities which have got a B attached to it. And there are a total of 10,000 of those. Let me just come out of the Excel spreadsheet and show you actually, the PowerPoint and show you the actual Excel file. Okay? You'll just see the first few columns. But you can see here that the first row looks like 0, 0, 0, 0. The second row is 0, 0, 0, 1. And if I go to the bottom of this file, takes me right down to 10, the, the, the last randomization, which is labeled 9999. And each of these rows is unique, is different. It is a different way of randomizing those 20 clinics to either on group A or to group B. And each of the rows have precisely 10 facilities in group A and 10 facilities in group B. So we can just... Um, move up and you can see there are lots of them. Uh, there's a list going through there. <laughs> Do you want to just quickly make sure you're happy with the list? Um, I mean, let's just make sure that there's uh, the first column has a randomization number attached to it, starting with 0, 0, 0, 0. And it should be the next row should be 0, 0, 0, 1 and so on. Does that look? Yep. Let me just go to the top. So there's one list over here, there's another list, so we have a, an independent person over here looking at our list. So the reason why we didn't print out a copy for everyone is that list is 179 pages long, so it's a, it's a big list, okay, so that's why there's three copies in the room. And <laughs> No, you're the important person. I think you're going to be the, you're going to be help us later on, actually. Okay. So that's our list of ten thousand possible randomizations, and that's based on this approach of stratification and restriction. Now let me explain how we're actually going to do it. And there's going to be two stages to this randomization. So. The first stage is from that list of 10,000 possible randomizations, we're going to select one at random, entirely at random. <coughs> okay. And uh, I'll explain in the next few slides how we're going to do that. So remember that each of these randomizations are listed and have a randomization code from 0000 up to 9999. And we're going to select one of those rows of the Excel spreadsheet entirely at random. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to um, continue with the football theme of 2018, and you'll see later that we're going to have uh, 10 footballs, and each of those footballs will be of the same size and color, but each of them have got a number from zero up to nine um, drawn on the football. So the first ball will have zero, the second ball will have one, and so on. So there are 10 footballs in total with a number from 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 9. What else we can do with those? Well, we're going to place each of these 10 footballs into a non-see-through bag. Okay, we're going to shake them so that there's no sort of number, number 1 doesn't knock near the top or number 10, uh, number 9, sorry, is not near the bottom. So we're going to make sure that the, the bag is, has been sh uh, shaken. And what we're going to do then is select four balls from that bag. And each of these four balls corresponds to one of the four digits in that randomization code that we saw earlier. And that's a, a random way of selecting one of those randomizations listed in the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, it sounds quite complicated, but when we get to look at it, uh, uh, I think it's. Um, uh, I think it will be clear what we're doing. So we're going to select four balls at random 
and each of these four balls will correspond to one of the four digits in the randomization. Well, how are we going to select those four balls? <laughs> okay. That's where people in the audience are going to help us. So four representatives will be chosen from the audience, and each of those four representatives will select um, a ball randomly from the bag containing these 10 balls labeled 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 9. So the first person will select um, the first ball, and the number on that first ball will represent the first digit from that randomization number. Then we'll, well, then we'll ask the second person to come up. They will select a second ball, and the number on that football represents the second digit of that randomization number. <coughs> They'll place the ball back in the bag. The third person comes up, again selects a ball at random, or shake the bag each time, and that, that ball, the number on that ball represents the third digit. And finally, the fourth person will come up, select a ball at random, a football at random, show us what the number is, and that will represent the fourth digit. And so then we'll have a, a number, a four-digit number. And we're going to write down on this, maybe we'll, we'll write it down on the, um, the board here. And that's the randomization row that we've chosen. Exactly. So we'll go back to the Excel spreadsheet and we'll look to see which of the clinics and which of the facilities are in Group A and which of the facilities are in Group B. And uh, you're going to help us read out the facilities. Okay. We have two people checking as well. Okay. Right. So that's the first stage of the randomization. Um, uh, let me give you an example. Okay, this is just an example, okay? I have just, this is uh, purely just for illustration. So suppose that the number that came up when those four representatives selected a ball each was 0, 0, 0, 4. Suppose that wasn't, that's is just purely example. We'll look at the Excel spreadsheet and we'll read off the row representing that number. Okay, and you should see the same numbers, uh, it might be, it's a little bit difficult to see, um, but you should see the same um, pattern of A's and B's representing that, um, that randomization number of 0004. So I can quickly read off now that I can see that facilities um, 1, 2, 4, 9, 10, 11, 14, 15, 16, and 20 all have group A, and the remaining facilities are in group, um, sorry, all have group B, I beg your pardon, and the remaining facilities have group A. Okay, so there are 10 facilities in group B, and 10 in group A. So that's just an example, okay? And we're gonna then do this for the real, for real in the next few minutes. So that's an example. So at that point, Okay, we've got our randomization. We know which of the 10 clinics are in group A and which of the 10 clinics are in group B. We now have to decide whether group A or whether group B receives the intervention. Okay, so really this is the crucial part. Yeah? So this is the, uh, this is the kind of the most exciting part of the randomization. Is group A the intervention, or is group B the intervention? So how are we going to do that? Again, we're going to do that in a, random, in, a, in a random manner. So we have our fifth person who selects a football. So it's one football. Well, show, the person will show us the number on that football. If it's an even number, so 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, then group A receives the intervention and group B is routine care, okay? However, if the number selected is odd, so one, three, five, seven, and nine, then group B will receive the intervention, and group A is the routine care. So that's our stage two of our randomization. We'll then know whether group A is the intervention or whether group B is the intervention. <coughs> 